What's up everyone? Today we are talking about hypertension. In other words, high blood pressure. Approximately 50% of adult men and 44% of adult women in the United States have hypertension. So it's safe to call this disease a common disease, which is actually really sad. To give you an idea of how the US ranks in comparison to other countries, I looked up some statistics. And based on a study by the World Health Organization in 2019, the USA had approximately 47% of the adult population with hypertension. The lowest countries were Switzerland, Peru, and Canada, and they all sat at about 20% of their adult population. The highest rates were Paraguay and South America at about 56%, and some countries in Central and Eastern Europe, like Hungary, Poland, and Lithuania. And they were all at between 50 and 60% prevalence. Across the world though, men are unfortunately at higher risk than women. So let's talk about what causes hypertension. Diabetes is a common one because insulin resistance stops the blood vessels from relaxing and it restricts blood flow, which causes blood pressure to rise and remain high. Diabetes and hypertension often go hand in hand. In fact, two out of three people living with diabetes also report having high blood pressure. So that is a really common cause. Another cause of high blood pressure is high sodium or salt intake. Studies have repeatedly shown that people with high salt intake have higher blood pressure. This is because of stiffening of the arteries, increased water retention, impaired function of the arterial walls, and just a general decreased elasticity of the arteries. This is why most medical professionals will usually recommend cutting out salt for people who are diagnosed with high blood pressure. And of course, there are other causes as well, um, even conditions like COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, cystic fibrosis, or believe it or not, living at really high altitudes. They can all put you at higher risk for hypertension. These conditions all cause hypoxia, which is basically a lack of oxygen, which causes high blood pressure in the arteries around the lungs to rise. It's like the body senses that it's not getting enough oxygen, so it increases blood pressure to pump more oxygen-rich blood to that area. Another cause may just be poor diet and not enough exercise. And that's actually probably going to be the most common diagnosis from a doctor. Because truthfully, a lot is still unknown about hypertension. And there can be multiple factors at play that cause someone to have increased blood pressure. So the doctor tells you to start eating better, exercise, lose some weight, and here, take this medication. And you leave with a very vague plan and a bottle of pills. Whether you decide to try and take action and eat healthy and exercise or not, that's up to you, but you will likely take the medication if you picked up the prescription, right? But what if the doctor really took the time to dive into what potentially caused your high blood pressure in the first place? What if you could have a specific plan to solve the root of the problem, the actual cause of your hypertension, and avoid having to take medication altogether? I know not everyone is anti-medication, some people are okay with medication, and I'm not saying it's not helpful in some circumstances, but blood pressure medications have quite a few side effects to be aware of. The side effects will vary based on the type of medication that you are taking, but the most common reported side effects include cough, intestinal issues like diarrhea and constipation, dizziness and lightheadedness, erectile dysfunction, weight fluctuations, and feeling weak and nervous. So what if there was a way to help you lower your blood pressure without taking this medication? Something more specific than a doctor's prescription to eat better. I'm going to give you five things that you can start including in your daily routine that have been proven to lower blood pressure. The first is potassium. Now, I have talked about potassium before. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend checking it out. We do a deep dive into the connections between potassium and sodium. But potassium is used in the body to control how much fluid is inside the cells. And since we know that high sodium levels cause water retention, which increases blood pressure, it makes sense that low potassium would lead to fluid and sodium imbalances and cause high blood pressure. So the first thing to do is increase your potassium intake. The top three sources of potassium I would recommend are 
a banana, which has about 400 milligrams, a medium baked potato with the skin, which has about 900 milligrams, and a quarter cup of raisins, which sits at 300 milligrams. Adults are actually recommended to get over 3,000 milligrams a day of potassium. And supplements are usually not high enough to have much of an impact unless you're gonna take a handful or two every day. So do a little research, find out foods that you like or foods that will fit into your daily lifestyle that are high in potassium and start consuming them regularly. Next up, garlic. Garlic is actually a natural ACE inhibitor and ACE inhibitors are a type of blood pressure medication. Garlic increases something called nitric oxide in your body. Nitric oxide is a molecule throughout our body and it's crucial for blood vessel health. It's what's called a vasodilator, meaning it relaxes the muscles inside your blood vessels. This will cause the blood vessel to widen, so that means nitric oxide in garlic will actually increase blood flow and lower your blood pressure. Another food you can eat that relaxes the arteries is celery. I know it's not everyone's favorite, but celery contains a phytonutrient that has been proven to lower your blood pressure. Some people try taking celery seed in oil or in supplement form, but it has not shown as much promise as just eating the real thing. One cup a day is enough, or about four stalks. My next recommendation is actually a supplement called tocotrienol. It's a part of the vitamin E family. Tocotrienol is an antioxidant that is not found commonly in nature. It is in a few oils and grains, but it's in very small amounts and it would not be an efficient way for us to consume it. But it has proven to improve heart health for a few reasons. First, it's an antioxidant, so it acts as a natural blood cleaner to reduce those free radicals like dead cells and cell debris and all that needs to be removed from, or from the blood because they cause damage or inflammation. This tocotrienol also reduces the level of bad cholesterol in our blood. And as an added bonus, because of its antioxidant properties, it reduces the risk and the effects of some cancers. Again, you can't really find it in many foods, but there are plenty of supplements out there that you could try. The fifth and final recommendation is L-arginine. I think the term L-arginine sounds a little weird and it sounds foreign, but you are actually likely already consuming this in your daily diet. It's found in meat, dairy, poultry, seafood. It's an amino acid, which is a protein building block, and it's commonly used for circulation. When you consume foods like chicken breast, salmon, eggs, red meat, or whatever the source of L-arginine really, your body converts this to nitric oxide. And we just talked about nitric oxide from garlic, remember? Nitric oxide relaxes blood vessels, it widens them, it lowers your blood pressure in your arteries. And gentlemen, another added bonus of L-arginine is its sexual health benefits. It helps produce testosterone and it's used for erectile dysfunction. So check out L-arginine, take a look at its sources, see if you can increase your daily intake. I do suggest trying to eat foods containing this amino acid before using it in supplement form. I know most of us eat one meat a day at least, as long as we're not vegetarian, but maybe you can incorporate more into your daily diet. Maybe eating Greek yogurt for breakfast or lunch, or adding in a few eggs every day. I know some people like soup or crackers or hummus, they like snacky lunches, but Adding in these L-arginine sources could really help control your blood pressure and prevent the use of blood pressure medication unnecessarily. Remember, in addition to that L-arginine, boost your potassium intake, and then we talked about garlic and celery to relax and widen your arteries, and finally, tocotrienol, which could also be a great addition to your daily routine to keep your blood pressure levels under control. I hope this helps you in your journey to better health. Let me know if you've ever tried any of these and if you've seen results, I would love to hear about it. Until next time, everyone, be well, and I will see you soon.